it's Jeff Chalmers here from Discover Double Bass, which is where you can go to learn about the wonderful instrument that is the double bass with our courses, our lessons and our interviews, just like this one, with some of the best bass players uh, on the scene today. And this is somebody who is joining us today that I'm very excited uh, to meet. I have been nerding out on their playing ever since I saw this incredible performance of uh, the Bark Chacon, which we will be talking about momentarily. So it gives me enormous pleasure to introduce to Discover Double Bass. It's Florentin Junot. Welcome. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Happy to be there. Well, fantastic that you're over in the UK. You're, we're actually in Huddersfield for the Contemporary Music Festival where you're performing this evening. Tell us who you're performing with and uh, what's on the programme? Well, we are performing, I think we are doing the opening concert tonight with, uh, with Ensemble Music Fabric, which I'm the bassist of. Um, and we play uh, two wonderful pieces, one by Eno Poppe, a uh, German composer living in Berlin, uh, called Procession, which is a massive one hour long uh, um, uh, full ensemble piece. And another one full evening by Raya Chanovin living in New York, um, which is also full full length, uh, full ensemble piece. So it's a it's a pretty intense long long evenings uh, ahead. Are you here in the UK just for this one concert, or is this part of a wider? Yes, tour? we are actually. Yeah. It's a drop in and off, and it's uh, it's a bit crazy, obviously, at the yeah. moment with COVID and and Brexit and all the. Have you, I know it all makes it, everything yeah. is more complicated when it mm -hmm. comes to travel at the moment. And yeah. have you uh, performed much since um, the uh, lockdowns have lifted? Have you managed to play many concerts? recently. I noticed you were in Aberdeen recently in Scotland. Yeah, exactly. I was in Aberdeen for a festival, a flight-free festival, obviously, yeah. uh, which is a, a great thing. Um, so you got the train with your double bass to the Eurostar, is that right? No, actually I couldn't because yeah. we, we cannot take the bass in the Eurostar. That's, that's what I was, yeah. so, um, so I had two basses rent in Aberdeen uh, oh, wow. and bringing the strings, turning the string, etc. Um, so the lockdown, yeah, it's been, I mean, I'm, I'm working between Germany and France, so I was uh, in German with the word pendling, so which is, uh, you know, yes. getting back and forth, so I, I also got back and forth between the different lockdowns in different countries, Yeah. so I could actually work, and Music Fabric provides us a lot of work, which are very lucky, with actually produce, producing a lot of videos, what yeah. we call the resilience video and the lockdown tapes, yes. I think we produce 170 videos, it's crazy. And um, so that was a, a lot of uh, occupation and great occupation, chamber music playing. I was checking out the video that you'd done uh, for double bass and wah-wah pedal. Yeah, and Steve I was like, Anderson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you kind of, you, you won't really know what this is unless you see it. So I'll be providing a link below because it's such a unique uh, piece. Yeah, that's quite a crazy piece. It's yeah. actually a study, you know, it's a study for whammy pedal player and string instruments uh, oh, so and it's mostly played you know on, on violin or cello and I think it was never played on the bass before so yeah. that was also a challenge to adapt it because it's all about the glissando and and obviously the bass is uh, slightly bigger than the violin so you also need to adapt and we had some chat with Simon the composer which is a Dutch composer uh, about how to do that on the bass. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll definitely talk about extended techniques and contemporary music uh, in a later video. But in this discussion, I was hoping we could uh, move into discussing Bach on the double bass. And, and uh, first, before we get started, though, let's maybe hear a little bit about your journey. So, uh, where where did you study? Was it in Paris? And who were you, did you study with? What's your background that's led you to this place? Yeah, my background. So first, I I, I did. The first time I played Bach was on a cello because I did uh, uh, learn cello and bass. Okay. I started cello at eight, age of eight, and bass age of nine, and I did continue both until seventeen. So I, I always had this, uh, let's say, uh, double side of a string instruments, which is still very different in the approach of the bow technique, of the of the speed, of uh, of the digitality of the of the left hand, and I think. I could use both qualities in, in both instruments, I mean, vice versa. Do you so feel that it helps you? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And in both, I mean, in cello and bass, just both were, I mean, at the beginning it's difficult because you, you, know, you have the tendency to, you know, to just go down with the cello. But once you understand a way, your own way to find that, it's actually great. Um, the background question was that, right? Yes, yeah. so I actually studied first north of Paris in, in Aubervilliers-la-Courneuve, which is a, uh, one of the red uh, suburbs of Paris, okay. with uh, someone called Jean-Christophe Delforge. 
uh, and I did a lot of studies there from nine uh, years old. And then there actually I learned, he, I mean, he's coming from the old music repertoire and including uh, original instruments. Uh, mm. Uh, sorry for the English term for that, but um, uh, period instruments. And so I did learn also the violone and gut strings and etc. I, I had this practice uh, pa as part of my wow. studying. And he was a very open, he is a very open person and he, he did invite, for example, Claude Chamitian, a fantastic jazz and improviser, uh, to give us improvisation lessons. I was, then I was age 11, which is you know, when you're 11, you have to improvise with 10 basses, you're actually freaking out. But it, this is a, it was a great experience. And then later on, also Frédéric Stoll for learning from Ensemble Attack d'Operin, from learning new repertoire. So it was really giving, I think, to these students the idea that, you know, the bass is a tool and you can make a lot of different things with it. And you can choose and you can adapt and you can also multiply. Uh, the experiences and uh, it's about music right and not about double bass yeah in bracket so that was the starting point and the opening of, of possibility with bass that was great and then i went to paris conservatory with jean paul celia for only two years because it was only the master that i did mm. there. and then um, i got a job at music fabric directly so wow uh, uh, 21 so that was um I left pretty quickly and uh, that, was, that was, yeah. It's so interesting, I was thinking about Lorraine Campe playing the violin and you playing the cello as well. Yeah. So I don't know what's happening in Paris, but you guys, I mean, you're doing amazing things because of the fact <laughs> that you're playing like both instruments, so, yeah. you know, so beautifully. So w did you ever take any lessons with some of the, when I think about Paris, I think about Renaud Garcia Fons, I think about Francois Rabath, mm. Thierry Barber. Uh, my pronunciation is probably terrible there, but, um, <laughs> Did you ever take any lessons with uh, uh, other bass players, just specifically getting into technique? People not like so that? much, no, yeah. actually not. Um, how can, how can, can I put that together without hurting people? Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I've always been more interested in looking at other people than bassist, to say it. Yeah. I, I always thought, you know, the bass is, um, is a wasteland somehow and everything is to be done yes. still. And I do, I mean, Musically speaking, I've always been inspired by other instrumental players or, or other, you know, genre uh, also. And I, I, I do still believe in that very much. Um, and that's also why I'm, I'm pursuing the fact to develop new repertoire, yeah. both in the old repertoire or in new repertoire with composers which are living and which I'm working with and developing new, new pieces. Because I, I do think we have everything is still to be done. And that's, that's the beauty of it. And that's also one of the reasons why I stopped playing the cello. Uh, because the cello has an incredible repertoire. You can basically spend your life playing music from dead people because mm. it's amazing. And the bass, it's quite difficult to do that because you, you hit the roof pretty early. And, um, and yeah. But, uh, but you've moved, you've been exploring this contemporary world whilst also the traditional repertoire, but then pushing the boundaries. So the Bach, uh, Chacon, this virtuosic uh, piece yeah. for the violin, uh, or, you know, a part of a piece for, for, uh, for violin. Uh, what led you to take, was that, the, was that your first meeting with Bach in terms of playing, or had you learned the cello suites? Uh, yeah, I did a lot of Bach. I yeah. mean, I, I did a lot of, of Bach. On, on the cello, I did play the cello suites, of course. And then on the bass, I think I started with the, the cello suite, but also some double violin concertos, uh, wow. which I play with the orchestra. And, um, you know, various things. I also played the, the Contract for Viola da Gamba with actually accordion, with a fantastic wow. organ player called Fanny Vicens, also French. And, uh, and then um, I think as a string player, the bar solo repertoire is sort of a basic thing you always get back to. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so amazing as a music, and, but also as a, as a food for the mind, you know? It's really, it, 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 makes, it makes you, it, you grow with it, right? You grow with it. So I started with a back uh, suite and then I went actually pretty quickly with a violin repertoire because yeah. I, I mean, I tried purely by curiosity and it appeared to me that it actually sounds great on the bass. Probably because of the reverse uh, um, tuning with the violin, probably for other reasons, probably also because it's not too close from the bass. You know, the cello is quite close from the bass and somehow you get um, 
this, this uh, contact with the other instrument is maybe devaluating what you're doing. When you're playing some violin repertoire, it's so different anyway that it's really something else. And yeah. you bring it to another level. And the violin, you know, the, I mean, the, you cannot imitate the virtuosic element of the violin, the speed, the, the, the bow technique, the, you, you cannot imitate that on the bass. But what the violin doesn't have and we have is the resonance, is the spectrum, is the, the harmonics ri uh, richness. And I do think, and that's what I'm working on, that you can compensate the virtuosic work with this spectrum uh, richness. So it, it, you need, I think, to switch your mind to another uh, kind of work of research, and that's mm. what I did on the Chacon. But it's possible, yeah. So in terms of tuning, um, and I, I mean, I was watching uh, one of your performances yesterday, and, and, the, and the way that you seem to move around this fluidity in your left hand, First of, I mean, first of all, how are you tuning the bass when you're playing the solo, solo repertoire like the Bach? And is it different depending on the piece? I mean, is it the cello and you know, uh, suites compared to a more traditional double bass repertoire that was written just for the bass? Are you, are you in solo tuning, fourths, fifths? What's it, what's it looking like for you? Yeah, I mean, as I said a, a bit before, for me, the bass is a tool, and I'm, I'm very happy to, to adapt the tool to the musical goal. Yeah. And I think that's, that makes complete sense with the bass history and with the bass role. You know, we had three, four, five, six strings. Uh, we have been, you know, the t side. Everything is, is evolving with the mm. music. So it does make sense to do that in a solo situation as well, in my opinion. And that's exactly what I did with, uh, with the Bach. And it's the instrument. I actually did spend some time before I found the right instrument to play the Chacon, for example, which is a, a, a Jacquet bass. Uh, which I bought only two years ago. Um, the bow is also a commissioned bow, uh, um, actually. Um, and the strings, uh, that was a lot of work to find the right strings and the right tuning. I mean, it's basically a piccolo tuning, so with a high C okay. string. So, so it's, uh, how, how's it tuned from the lower, um, from the lower strings then? So, um, I would go from the higher. Yeah, okay. It's a C, a G, uh, oh, D A D G. Oh, okay, and then that's yeah. tuned down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, okay. the, uh, if you transpose, I mean, I play the shakon in, in G, and uh, the whole bass is tuned in G. Mm. So the whole spectrum of the bass resonates with the piece and with the harmony. And that's uh, that. Uh, I mean, my research in the last um, years, which I, I've started also a lot with Marat Marais and with French repertoire from, from the Baroque French repertoire. I've noticed that it, it grows a lot when, when the instrument is actually resonating with the harmonies of the piece, etc. So, Are you playing solo, uh, a, a solo s set of spiva chords there? Is there the yes. actual string? Yeah. So how are you tuned at the moment? Is it the same? Yeah. At the moment it's, it's exactly the same principle just with the solo tuning. So okay. A, E, B, E. So I see. So you're in fourths, except for the lowest yeah. string, which is tuned down a step, and then uh, a whole step. Yeah. And um, yeah. okay. And then in, in this instance, you're in solo tuning, but you're not in solo tuning for the chacon. No, you're no. using the high C. Yeah, a high C with a gut string I was, uh, wired. I was kind of actually. looking at your hands, thinking yeah. there's just this unique look about it. I was trying to figure out what you were doing. It's a really, it's a beautiful resonant. Yeah. 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 I spend actually the, a lot of time trying to find the right balance between the tension of the high C, which is quite problematic, I find, on the bass, and, and, and allowing the bass to, to still vibrate freely, and actually the gut string allowed that. So that's a high D, sorry, then, if it's... No, no. That's, that's another bass and another tuning. Ah, I see, yeah, yeah I see. So that's, uh, that's definitely, that's just solo strings. I just tune the, this one lower in case I, I want yeah. to play some Mare or whatever. Yeah. But I do change, I mean, I do change the tuning. Uh, for example, when I started the Mara Mara, I was playing in fourth mm. or uh, in solo tuning. And then I explored with a, with a fourth minor, uh, you know. I love um, it. And, and it, it, I changed the, the fingering, I changed everything. But it's also nice to, you know, after a few years, you need to evolve with the music. You can't just stay there. So, so it's nice to find other ways of playing the same thing. And it brings other pieces alive as well. And, and the instrument, your jacquet, is is that a smaller instrument? Is it or, or is it's, it? It's a bit different. This is yeah. a Clodo uh, from 1850, and yeah. it's, it's 
it's super loud. I mean, it's a challenge. Can, can to we play. hear some of it? Yeah, it's, it's uh, looks beautiful. Yeah, it's. Uh, If you take the prelude on arpeggiament by Mara Mara, you know So you see the whole bass is, is the whole harmonics is is vibrating with this chord, right? Yeah. So it makes it makes sense musically. It doesn't make maybe make sense as an instrument, but then you get to the reflection that it's a tool. Yeah. You need to adapt the tool for 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 your goal. It's as interesting. You're flexible because if you're going between the cello and the bass and different tunings, it's, yeah. I think you have to have a certain. For some people, I don't think you you have to have a flexible mindset to be able to move between these without finding it distracting and confusing yeah. and to just... I'm flexibility, I mean, for, for me, flexibility is one of the most important uh, things. It's always problematic. It's a challenge. And, and, you know, I completely connect that to the exploring new repertoire in, in contemporary music. I mean, I do a lot of scordatura, so-called scordatura, so changing of, of the strings, which is co something coming from the Baroque repertoire. Mm. And, uh, and, of course, your mindset, I mean, the instrument you're playing is is changing all the time and you one day and I, I mean i have three basses and and one day on a friday we'll play a bass with this tuning on a saturday another tuning and your mind still needs to recognize as the same instrument for you to be able to perform properly so yeah. so it's all practice to to get to this point but it's amazing because then it allows to to expand also the music possibilities, musical possibilities. So if you're moving into uh, between the different bases, are you always playing spiral core solos, but then just tuning them appropriately to the piece, or do you often use different sets as no, well? No, I use different sets. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a strings geek alert. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I use this because I find it okay, and mm. uh, I I didn't do so much research for this except for the Chacon research. Mm. Because that was a very, it's a very specific and it's a hardcore work. So, so tell me about the bow that you used in this Chacon. Who was the maker? Yeah, so um, I've been meeting Boris Fritsch, a uh, um, bow maker in Paris, actually, um, not a while ago. That was probably in December 2020, so after yeah. this video. Um, I mean, the video in the Philharmonie of the Chacon. But um, because basically I'm... There is a CD coming out in a few months uh, oh, with a full right. partita uh, and oh really yeah with a full piece it's a full partita what? wow yes. wow yeah yeah that uh, plus a Bieber uh, so also uh, sorry there's the joke just been t Justin Bieber coming all the time in my mind <laughs> I have some friends non musician friends who keep saying you're playing Justin just Bieber music <laughs> yeah, no 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 Heinrich von Bieber from the, you know Baroque style. And um, so it's half an hour and a half an hour. Yes. And uh, so Bieber is also the, the Pasakai, also for violin. Actually, the oh. three Bieber stuff, it's a CD of violin repertoire, to say. Wow. It. But um, yeah, basically, I started this research about the Chacon a while ago. And after doing this and looking ahead of the CD recording, mm. uh, I really wanted to, you know, I found the bass and I wanted to, to have a bow which was also really dedicated to this repertoire. And we had a talk with Boris Fritsch, and actually he created, uh, you know, I met him in December, and uh, he listened to the video, and he was like, I don't have the time, but uh, okay, let's do it. And I, I told him, you know, I'm recording in, in June, so I need the bow maximum in May. And we just went for it, and that was, that was an amazing work together. And he designed a bow, uh, which I don't have here, because it, it's in re-herring, actually. Um, which is a very strange thing, a mix of really um, baroque contrasts. You know, I mean, the, mm. if you take this, this is a, a Bergeron from Lyon bow, modern classical thing. And of course, I mean, the other bow is almost straight uh, forward. is a very large, um, uh, how do you say in frog. English, frog. And and anyway, it's very light. It's really it's. It, I mean, I sent him some Bieber recording and he looked at the Chacon and we really worked on the dynamics of this period of this music. You know, this super, actually, this very, very violinistic uh, articulation of the bow. 
Um, so yeah, that's part of the research. I mean, it's very lucky to be able to do that, of course. Also Wonderful that, he's, that you're yeah. able to connect with yeah, such yeah, a yeah. But master. this, is, this was, uh, I learned a lot of things, you know, and now I have books at home of, you know, with uh, 300 pages of bow uh, images. I mean, I never thought I would have that one day. It's very geek, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's amazing what you learn uh, for your music, of course, uh, talking yeah. with these people. So, yeah. So when it came to performing the, the Chacon, there's obviously a huge amount of uh, double stops and chords uh, happening within the piece. And your intonation is just immaculate. It's so mm. clear and your phrasing is so clear. I wonder if the, you could talk about the preparation for that piece and the challenges and if there was anything that you worked on to, uh, to be able to play with such clarity, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, the most difficult thing I performed uh, I think so far it's it's uh, it's physically extremely demand extremely demanding a lot of for the, for the left hand it's it's really demanding I mean I do also rec recognize I mean since actually I started the bass and that was almost a joke with my former teacher I always uh, <laughs> let's say let's say it uh, nicely I took the freedom to do what I wanted with my left hand you know with yes. these extensions and the way of of uh, moving more in between the positions are staying in into the strict positions yes which i'm not sure you can really play this repertoire with just sticking to the rules and um i mean the shakon has been a, a long drive i think it's been a, a few years i started just by curiosity to play it and i thought no way Let, let's leave it to the violin players and then you know you come back and you're a bit more curious and you try again and, and there was this yeah. back and forth and at some point I thought, okay, it's it's maybe possible, and uh, and there is a huge work of tuning. I mean, it's mm. uh, because also we are in fourth and not in fifth. It's really there's some very extent. You're using a lot of lower yeah, thumb position, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah. It's very, it's very. That's why it's very demanding because you need to be fast because there is a lot of very fast and virtuosic elements, and still you need to. Well, you need to find, you know, your, t your hand is mostly through 15 minutes, mostly te in tense, in tense position, which of course blocks the muscles uh, for the rather fast things. So you need to find always the performing uh, the methodology to find where you will relax and how you will relax. And maybe you will change some fingering so you allow yourself after these three minutes of, you know, of bariolage of uh, the, the beginning when you're really doing that you will need to change the, the fingering so you can actually allow your hand to relax. Mm -hmm. um, this doesn't help very much with uh, how, how to, to perform this, but it's, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, actually a lot of research uh, once again was to, to find, uh, because my goal with the Chacon was to not adapt it for the bass, but to play the Chacon. Okay. And, um, and you, you, I mean, it, it's, it's a bit uh, sarcastic, but there is a difference, I do believe. And it also means keeping the chords as they are, not reverse them, as mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are some adaptations for viola or cello, which are reversing a lot of things. So to not do that, I think there must maybe one exception where I, there is one note off or two exceptions, but you know, to not uh, adapt the music for the instrument. Um, and that means finding the way in the bass, in this, you know, frame that you have here, to make that happen. And that goes through, for me, harmonics mostly, and resonating, and um, approaching the instrument in another way that maybe the romantic way will teach you, which is very, you know, very pragmatic, um, lines uh, based um, i mean when i say lines i say melodic based and to see it almost as a um, polyphonic instrument actually mm. much more close to the organ than the violin if you see it and and actually the cd i was talking about is bieber bar because we know that bach learned a lot from bieber to write all the partitas and we know the pasakai from bieber is has been very influential for the shakon for example and, and the bar was, you know, was um, doing all these things on the organ instrument. Um, so you need, to, you need to approach this, I think, in a quite different way as, uh, as a romantic string instrument, for example. Yeah. 
Do you have any plans to perform the Shikan or for the full Patita or, or uh, you know, uh, any of these works in, in public? It'd be wonderful to see like a solo I, recital I, I did it actually once, uh, I mean, the first time I performed it, I, I decided to do for the full show. That was, that was a nightmare. I mean, the full Patita and that was really hardcore. That was funny. Because um, the Shikan is 13 minutes long or something? It's 15. 15? I, it's a half an hour. The whole so party is half an hour. The whole party is half an hour. So, yeah. But it's, uh, you know, the, 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 gig for, the Giga, for example, is, yeah. is, is also incredibly virtuosic thing. And, uh, and it's also more traditional virtuosic, so it's really fast line. So you need a way, you need to find a way to, to make that happen without just, uh, without just looking hard. You know, mm. for the audience, they need to they need to enjoy the music and the sound and the resonating instruments and the meaning of doing that on the bass because the world doesn't need another partita version, mm. obviously. So you need to bring something on top, uh, otherwise it doesn't make this wonderful sense. resonance of this huge instrument. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, it's been fantastic to speak to you today uh, about this volunteer. I'm hoping that we might be able to cut to a performance of you playing. And of course, people need to go and check out this incredible video that you filmed. Um, the the Shikon, the performance is just it is outstanding and the videography and the uh the room that you're the, you know that you're playing in the hall is absolutely stunning on every level so it really is something that um i you know i hope people will enjoy and lastly just t let us know where people can find out more about you so we can buy the cd that's coming out the new recording so when's it coming out and where can people fi find you online what's your website and what have you yeah well it's 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 a uh, cd produced by the label nomad music which is a, a french label a great fr french label and it, it will be out in, in March 22, if I'm correct. So that would be, that would be something. And we'll be online on all platforms. And, yeah. Great. And your website is? And the website is existing yeah. uh, with my name. Florentinegino.com. And uh, there is a YouTube channel. There is uh, all, all what's needed. Yeah. And actually, I think the Shakon now is on YouTube. Uh, it was actually broadcast by the Philharmonie yes. on Facebook. Um, and now it's on YouTube. So, yeah. Well, so, I will provide links to everything below because, as I say, it's my top recommendation. It's right up there in the very uh, best reasons that YouTube is around. It's, it's just really inspiring. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And let's hopefully hear a little bit of you uh, perform right now. So we'll cut to that. Thank you so much for joining us, Valentin. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.